remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And before we get into this week's topic, I did want to take just a moment to talk about something uh, coming up this weekend here in the St. Louis area. Uh, a lot of you know, I've mentioned it once or twice in the show, that in addition to my interest in politics, I'm also involved uh, fairly heavily in professional wrestling. And I don't really talk about it a whole lot on this show, but I, you guys probably know that I uh, do that uh, as one of my other areas of interest. Well, I did want to mention to you that this weekend, this Saturday night here in the St. Louis area, I am involved in a very big event that's coming up, a very, very big match that's coming up uh, out at the GCS ballpark in Soge, Illinois, just on the other side of the Mississippi River. And it's a big night of professional wrestling under the stars at the ballpark. We're going to have a lot of the legends there uh, from wrestling in the chase and from the past, guys like Harley Race and uh, Baron Von Raschke and uh, Rocky Johnson, the father of the rock, he'll be there. Ken Patera will be there. There'll be a lot of them. And as a part of that event, there's a very big match between Dave Vaughn, whose guy I manage, and someone named Chaz Wesson. In that match, if Dave Vaughn loses, I get my head shaved. On the other side of the coin, if Chaz Wesson loses, I get to shave the head of promoter Herb Simmons. And Herb Simmons and I have had some problems for about three years now. It's gone round and round, and it's coming to a head, literally, this Saturday night at the GCS Ballpark in Sauget. So if you're in the St. Louis area this weekend, you'll want to come out and watch it. It'll be a great night of action, and you'll get to see me cut someone's hair. Okay, there's the uh, shameless plug of the evening. That's over and done with, done and dusted. Let's talk about this week's topic. You know... Over the last couple of weeks, it seems like some guys like Rand Paul and uh, Ted Cruz have taken a lot of heat from other Republicans, from more establishment type of Republicans and GOP leadership. They've taken a lot of heat from them for having the audacity to stand on their principles. And frankly, I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of it, to be truthful and honest with you. And I think today is a good time for those of us who are Republican voters, those of us who are conservatives, those of us who are, who are grassroots, I think today is a good day for us to have a come-to-Jesus meeting with the GOP leadership. Now, some of you may not know what a come-to-Jesus meeting is. It's a little something we have down south where I'm from. A come-to-Jesus meeting is when you sit someone down and you leave all the niceties at the door and you don't beat around the bush and you lay out for them, here's where you're screwing up. Here's what you're doing wrong. And here's where you're headed if you stay down that path. At the end of it, you have a decision to make. If you're going to shape up or if you're going to keep sliding down the cliff you're on. That's what a come to Jesus meeting is. Some of you Yankees might call it an intervention or something fancy like that. We like come to Jesus meeting. That's what that is. So we're going to have one of those with you people in the GOP leadership and you rhinos here today on America's Evil Genius. All right, first things first. Let's, let's get to a starting point here. During my adult lifetime, and I started voting back in the early 90s, 1992 is my first presidential election. During my adult lifetime, the Republican Party in America has been, frankly, the luckiest party in the history of American politics. Now, why do I say the Republican Party has been lucky for the last 20 years? I say the Republican Party has been lucky for the last 20 years because during that time, the Democratic Party has been nothing short of, pardon my French, batshit crazy during that entire time period. The Democratic Party has been nothing more than the party of baby killers, the party that rejects traditional Judeo-Christian American values, the party of the lazy, the party of the criminal, the party of the illegal immigrant, and all the rest. The party that wants to destroy society, essentially. That's what the Democrats have been. And as a result, it has been very difficult during that time period for a sane, a rational, or a morally centered person to ever vote Democrat. It's been very difficult to do. So the end result of that is that the Republicans have gained a lot of, I don't want to say loyalty, but they have gained a lot of almost sure thing votes from people who could never bring themselves to vote for such a batshit crazy party as the Democrats currently are. In other words, the Republican Party really hasn't had to work particularly hard to gain the votes of what you might call sane and rational America, people like you and I. Unfortunately, that's resulted in 
conservative values not being pushed to the forefront in America nearly as much as they should have been over the last 20 years. Now, don't get me wrong. The Republican Party is not entirely to blame for that. The, the GOP leadership and the rhinos and so forth, yes, they've got their significant amount of blame here, but they're not alone in the blame. We gotta blame ourselves a little bit. Let's, we're having the come to Jesus meeting. We're laying it all out on the table. Let's all be honest here, shall we? We, the grassroots of conservatives, we have some blame to take hold, hold of as well. Frankly, we have not forced the GOP to accommodate our values and ideals nearly as much as we should have over the last 20 years. Where were we during the debates over stuff like Medicare Part D? Where were we when George W. Bush was undergoing his out of control spending on crap like education? Frankly, we were not out there in front nearly as much as we should have been. So yes, we have some culpability as well. But for all of that talk of the last 20 years, for all of that blame, much of which goes to the GOP leadership, some of which must be laid at our own feet, for all of those things, where are we today? What is the result? Where is American politics in 2013? Well, right now, as we stand here today, in August of 2013, there is not a truly satisfactory alternative to the batshit crazy Democratic Party. That's all there is to it. There is a Republican Party. There is a GOP. But as we stand here today, that GOP, in its current form is simply less bad than the batshit crazy Democratic Party. We have a GOP that at least on the leadership level, not necessarily on the, in terms of the actual rank and file voters, but on the leadership level, the GOP seems to care more about wooing independent voters at the expense of conservatism and at the expense of conservatives who actually have the right, the right answers to America's future. Hence the flack that people like Rand Paul and Ted Cruz have gotten recently. Now, Many of those esteemed GOP leaders, many of those rhinos, many of those pundits, many of those Karl Roves, many of those political pundits and so forth and strategists and whatever will tell you that for the Republican Party to have any sort of chance, they must woo independent voters and frankly, we must leave we must leave our conservatism at the door. We must tamper it down a little bit. We must leave our principles at the door if we are ever to hope to win an election at all, particularly a presidential election. Well, is that true? How well has that strategy worked? Because the last time I checked, the last two elections, the Republican Party nominated Mitt Romney and John McCain. Both were milk toast, moderate Republican candidates who the GOP leadership attempted to tailor towards those Oh, so precious independence. Again, doing so at the expense of the grassroots and conservatives, by the way. And the result? Both of those moderates, both of those rhinos, both of those guys who were tailored to reach out to the independents, both of them got their ass handed to them by the most dangerous, batshit crazy liberal ideologue since Lyndon Johnson. Of course, I'm talking about Barack Obama. In other words, GOP leadership, your recent track record of winning elections sucks. Now, some of you might be thinking that this is sour grapes. Some of you might be thinking my statements here are crying over spilt milk. That's not the case. Because when we look at the losses in the last two elections, there is a legitimate reason for those losses. There's a legitimate reason that the disconnect from the conservatives has resulted in the Republican losses in those last two elections. Any political strategist, anybody who makes your living in politics will tell you, and I don't care what party they're in, they'll tell you this. They will tell you that in a close election, it is grassroots support that makes the difference. Now, what do I mean by grassroots support? That's a term that gets thrown around. What does it mean? What I am talking about is what you might call the, the grunt work, the unglamorous grunt work that has to happen to win an election. Things like going door to door and canvassing your neighborhood. Things like making phone calls and working phone banks. Things like driving people to the polls and getting people to ride to the polls and getting them and making sure they vote. Things like donating money, whatever you can. All that unglamorous, unheralded grunt work that no one likes to talk about and no one really enjoys but that's always necessary in order to win an election. Generally speaking, in a close election, whoever has the advantage in that area wins. Now, for the last two elections, sure, 
Most of us who are conservatives, if we voted, we voted for McCain, we voted for Romney. No, no quarrel with that. But you know what we didn't do? We were not enthusiastic enough about those candidates to get out there and make sure five other people went to the polls and voted the way we did. We didn't do that. We didn't have the enthusiasm to do that. Give the devil their due. Obama supporters in 2008 and to a lesser extent in 2012, they had that enthusiasm. Their ground game was better than ours. I hate to admit it. But they had that enthusiasm that inspired people to get the grunt work done. We did not have that enthusiasm to get the grunt work done. And it's all because, frankly, the Republican Party went the way of moderates and went the way of independents and rejected conservatism to a great degree. Let's be honest about it. The challenge that the Republican Party has, and it's a challenge that Democrats don't often face. It's a challenge that's kind of specific to our party when it comes to enthusiasm. You cannot manufacture enthusiasm among conservatives. Yes, the Democrats can manufacture it among liberals because liberals have this tendency to react emotionally and they, 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 they go for the warm and fuzzy and they get caught up in the moment and they like their public speakers and, 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 and they can really get enthusiastic and carried away with whatever they see on face value. Conservatives are deeper thinkers than that. We have to have it proven to us. So you can't manufacture enthusiasm with us the way the Democrats can with their people. So for us to be enthusiastic enough to get there and do the grunt work, to canvas the neighborhood, to knock on doors, to make phone calls, to drive people to polls and all of that, for us to do that, for us to be that inspired and that enthusiastic, you're going to have to have someone nominated who we actually believe is connected to our principles and our vision for America's future. It takes more than a couple of nice speeches to win us over. The Democrats, they put a couple of warm and fuzzy speeches out there. Their people go all gaga for it. They get inspired. I get it. It doesn't happen on our side. Conservatives are a tougher nut to crack. And quite frankly, the losses not only of Mitt Romney and John McCain, but previously losses of George Bush, losses of Bob Dole, that should tell you, GOP, what happens when you produce candidates who do not convince us conservatives that they have our values at heart, you have that enthusiasm gap and you lose every time. But for all my browbeating of you, GOP, for all my browbeating of you, Republican leadership, there is good news for you. The good news is that the Republican Party right now is well positioned, if only by accident or dumb luck, the Republican Party is well positioned to finally, at long last, be the alternative to that batshit crazy Democratic Party that we should have been all along. The American people as a whole, many of which were fooled by Barack Obama in this administration initially, many of whom actually voted for him. The American people are finally starting to see Obama and the batshit crazy Democrats for what they are, thanks to things like Benghazi, the IRS scandals, the actions during the Trayvon Martin case, and many more things. There's a lot of buyer's remorse out there right now. And quite frankly, a lot of those people are not satisfied with any politician of either party who desires to play the game in Washington. People across the Fruited Plain and across the aisle are sick to death of politics as usual. Hence, embracing the Rand Pauls, embracing the Ted Cruz's, and embracing our vision for America can go an awful long way towards repairing some credibility with those people. It can go an awful long way towards giving us the rebranding of the Republican Party that it so desperately needs. It will enable us as a party to rebrand ourselves clearly, not only as an alternative to the batshit crazy Democrats, but also as an alternative to Washington business as usual. Also as an alternative to the over-involved federal government, which frankly both parties have engaged in the 20th century. As an alternative to the federal government that compromises our freedoms and impedes our individual success each and every day. You have a great opportunity. But if you don't, Republicans, if you choose not to go this route, if those career politicians and those rhinos and those Carl Roves and John McCain's and all the rest are so myopic and so concerned for the short term that they keep grabbing onto the rails and power and won't let go to save their lives. Now let's cut to the chase. You will no longer have the enthusiasm from us 
that is necessary to facilitate the grassroots grunt work that you need in order to win elections. And you've already seen it happen. Not only the last two elections, but a couple of them back in the 90s. Worse yet, you just might lose us permanently. And make no mistake, there are not enough independents in this country to make up for losing the grassroots and the grunt work that comes from the conservatives. The independents aren't going to make sure that five or ten other people get to the polls. We will if we believe in you. Deep down you know that. You hate to admit it. You want to use us. But we're fighting back now, aren't we? You're going to have to start doing what we say if there's going to be a future for this party at all. Now, some of you are hearing me rail on the Republicans like this, and you may be wondering, am I talking about or am I open to the possibility of a third party in this country? Well, if you have watched this show for very long at all, you will know you've heard me say that a third party for us Tea Partiers, us conservatives, should be a last resort. That the best method, if it is possible, the best method for us to help move America to the right and save America is to do so within the existing structure of the Republican Party, if that is possible. And I've cautioned on this show many times how difficult of an uphill climb it would be to go third party. That being said, I've never taken it off the table. And let's be honest, we got to start asking ourselves, in 2013 and beyond, is it still good enough for us to be part of half a political party? Is being less bad than the other guys good enough? Or do we want more? Is America worth more than that? Is it worthwhile to have some high standards of our politicians and our elected leaders for once? Is it no longer good enough just to be slightly better than the criminals and perverts that staff the Democratic Party? Is there more we can expect from our elected leaders? Dare I say it, I think there is. And that's where we're coming from. So GOP leadership, you have one final chance to become the great party that you should have been all along. You have one final chance to embrace conservatism, to set this party up for the future, because I got news for you. The Republican Party, for what it stands for, which frankly, no one's really sure what it stands for right now, not even Republican voters. That should scare you to death. A party that doesn't even know what it stands for cannot survive in the next 20 years. We are here, we are ready, and we are able and we are willing to define this party for the future and to save America in the future. Now, Republicans, you can do this the easy way or you can do this the hard way. The easy way is to gracefully step aside, let this younger, conservative, and yes, libertarian-leaning generation take over and move this party and this country in the direction that it must go to survive or reject us, never win a presidential election again. And yes, it's gonna be hell for a little while in the short term, all that happens. But I just wonder sometimes if the Republican party must die so that it can be reborn again the balls in your court that's it for this week this is america's evil genius we will see you next time